Hi, it's Lawrence Krauss, 5-Minute Physics. Um, I thought, you know, this week, today is Good Friday in the United States, and it's also been Passover, and that got me thinking about miracles, since those seem to drive many faiths. And it's easy to see how, um, how early modern humans could imagine miracles when there's been a drought and, and crops are failing, and then suddenly and, uh, people, rain happens. It seems miraculous. Um, or, or when a plague comes and either affects people you don't like or, uh, or miraculously ends, uh, again, it can seem miraculous. Um, now, science, of course, doesn't deal with miracles. And, and, and probably the most interesting discussion of this that I know of is, again, from Richard Feynman, who really stressed the fact that we, we, we want to believe, as Fox Mulder might say in the X-Files, that it's it's we have have a natural tendency to ascribe significance to things when they happen to us, and this teleological tendency of humans is probably evolutionary. Uh, uh, there's, I'm not the first to argue that that uh, uh, in the early savannas of Africa, if the if the if the uh, leaves were rustling, you could assume there's no significance to it, or you could assume maybe there's some dangerous animal like a lion or something behind it, and those people who assumed no significance may not have been uh, survived long enough to reproduce. There's lots of evolutionary arguments, but the bottom line is that this willingness to ascribe significance is some, to things that may just be accidental has been really important for scientists to understand. Um, there have been many, many cases when you're working on an experiment and you see some anomalous result, something very strange. Of course, the, the, the first hope is that you've discovered something new about nature. And it's happened many, many times when scientists have not adequately questioned themselves, second guessed, to, to ask if it just, could just be an accident. Feynman, there was a famous example, again, of Feynman, a, a, an experiment involving my favorite particles in nature called neutrinos. And experimentalists had ascribed some significance to events that they'd seen in a big detector and a, and, uh, and I think it was a bubble chamber. And Feynman actually looked at it and analyzed and realized that there were metal screws in this detector and the events were happening around the metal screws. I think that was the case. And showed that it was really just an accident. And, and talked about things. You can, you can dream thousands of dreams that are nonsense and one day you dream that a friend had, breaks a leg and then the next day they break their arm. We have to remember to always recognize that when many events happen, uh, we ascribe significance to those events that, see, that we notice but they can, they can just be accidental, and uh, and I think it's one of the most important lessons from science that you should you should assume you should you should check and be very careful. To, you should recognize that coincidences happen, and even if it looks like it's something wonderful, it may be a coincidence. But but my purpose today wasn't just to to poo poo miracles. Was it this brought me back to uh, my high school physics class and my teacher, whose name I can't remember came in one day and said, I have two proofs of the existence of God. Now, of course, he was being facetious, but, but they were interesting, and they've stayed with me ever since then, two remarkable things about, about nature, not at the ex extremes of scale, but right here on Earth. And one was that when water freezes, it expands. Now, that may not seem miraculous, but it is in, if you think about it, it's largely responsible for perhaps for why life can exist on Earth. The, the, the reason it's, it seems so strange, and you may not realize it, is most liquids... In fact, almost all liquids, other than water that are liquid at room temperature, contract when they when they freeze. They don't expand when they freeze, and the reason is quite simple: when 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 the molecules are in a liquid, they're moving around a lot, and they're and 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 the, basically that's that's causing the liquid to have some volume. But when they when it freezes, the motion stops, and they can move closer together, and generally the liquid uh, uh, contracts. But water molecules, which are kind of like uh, like this, like triangles, like this H two O. Uh, when they're when they're bouncing around, they can fit and things like that and this and that. But when they form a crystalline structure, basically because of electric bonds, they may form something like this, which takes more volume than something like that. And water expands as a result. And that, if you think about it, is crucial for life on Earth. If water didn't expand when it froze, then lakes would freeze from the bottom up instead of the top down, and fish wouldn't be able to survive. And maybe early, even early species that may have eventually evolved and, and been important for us, wouldn't have survived. It not, may not just be important for life on Earth, but one of the most exciting things we're doing is thinking about exploring for life elsewhere in the solar system on, on, ice, plant, on ice moons like Europa or Enceladus, which are 
ice-covered moons, but we know now, we've discovered there are liquid oceans inside of them, uh, and we think they're probably the best places to look for life. And so um, it may, the, the fact that water, when water freezes, it expands, is, may not just be important here for life on Earth, but also uh, for life in the solar system and maybe beyond. That was the first uh, sort of miracle that he talked about. There was just this wonderful fact, accidental fact, but wonderful that water expands when it, it freezes. The other one he pointed out was that iron or steel and concrete have the same coefficient of expansion with temperature, and they expand the same way. And he said, without that, you'd never be able to have steel-reinforced, rebar-reinforced buildings. Now, of course, that's not an example of nature. That's an example of, if you wish, intelligent design, humans. But, you, you know, if, if iron and steel didn't have the same coefficient of expansion in big, tall skyscrapers as the temperature change got colder and warmer, huge cracks would form and they wouldn't be stable. Now, we could have always designed other materials that had better uh, uh, matched uh, coefficients of expansion, but it's fortunate that these two materials, which were basically already being used, in, if you wish, as, as fundamental components of, of structural design, match together. But that notion that we can design that, it makes it, I think, it allows me to end on a more important note, that because of science and technology, we don't have to rely on miracles. We, we if you wish, can create our own miracles. We can use the properties of nature, and we don't have to, we don't have to pray for rain. We can, we can do meteorology and understand what the climate is like and, and, and understand when it's likely to rain and what factors are going to affect that. We can... In, in, if people are sick, we can go to a doctor. We don't have to pray for them to get better. And in a case like this of the pandemic, we all depend on the fact, and, and, and governments are depending on the fact, that scientists are working now to not just work on treatments, but, but a vaccine. And we're confident at some point we'll have that because we can depend on science. So the wonderful thing that we should all celebrate is not only that miracles don't happen, but that we, that technology allows us to transcend them. And I think that's a good lesson for this week. And I hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.